Hi, I'm Jim Pence and welcome to Drawing with Chalk. Today we're going to focus on another picture element. Last time we focused on how to draw clouds and this time we're going to focus on how to draw mountains. You know, there's nothing more beautiful than a majestic mountain range. Um, they make a nice addition to a picture when you're just creating a drawing. So we're going to discuss different ways to draw mountains, uh, how to make them look realistic, and how to get the illusion of perspective and make them look far away or make them look close up, whatever you want to do. Now I've got my paper all ready, at least almost ready. Uh, it's actually a white background and I left it white for a reason because I want to remind you uh, that uh, particularly if you're using the, the big lecturer's chalk like I use normally, this is this is actually a, a small piece of lecturer's chalk that I've worn down and, and uh, used uh, many times, so it's a little tiny chunk now. But um, if, if you're using the big soft chalk, uh, which you know, can get expensive, um, uh, then one of the best ways to practice a little bit is to just practice on a white surface uh, so that you can you know, get a feel. See, that chalk just broke as I was working with it. Uh, get a feel for whatever it is you're trying to draw. Uh, without messing the pe uh, paper up for another drawing. So, you know, I can, I can practice mountains, I can practice hills, I can practice trees, uh, just using white chalk. And it, you know, preserves the, the chalk, it, it cuts down on the number of different colors you use, plus you can practice more than once because uh, I have an eraser here that I reserve pretty much for white chalk and so I can come back in take that off of my paper and uh, then you know just start drawing again. Now remember like I said before uh, if you're um, doing this at home in the house uh, you're going to notice when you erase you're going to throw a lot of chalk dust into the air so uh, be sure if you're going to erase take you know, take your drawing board outside and do that, uh, or if you have a dedicated room where it doesn't matter, uh, because uh, this chalk generates a lot of dust, and the more you erase it, the more dust you kick into the air. So uh, just a, a word to, uh, uh, you know, to, to be aware of so that you don't uh, have chalk dust everywhere in your house. All right, I'm going to take my, uh, it's kind of a dirty blue eraser, and uh, that's because I've used it for some other pictures. I'm just going to use what I've got here, and I'm going to use my eraser to kind of color a blue background. And that's just so we have something toned to work on. I've talked about this uh, before, and you'll hear me say it many times, that uh, chalk or pastel uh, goes better on a toned paper. Now, if you just erased it like I did, Again, there's a lot of dust on the surface. You, know, you, you blow it, you're going to get it in the air. So I will take my, my hand a lot of times and just smooth it in. And that way it's going to get rid of most of that excess dust and transfer it to your hand. So remember to keep your rag nearby or baby wipe. I've got a baby wipe today. And so that's just going to clean my hand off and get it so I don't transfer color where I don't want it. All right, let's talk about mountains. Uh, for starting to draw mountains, uh, you want to, first of all, just be very simple in your design. I'm going to use a light blue. It's really the same color here, but it'll be a little bit darker. Um, to practice mountains, when I tell people, you just make V's. Now, that may not show up really well because it's going to match too much, so I'm going to I'm going to backpedal and use some darker chalk here so you can see what I'm doing better. Uh, you're going to make some upside down V's. Okay, that's the basic mountain shape, just up and down. Now these are obviously going to be for distant mountains. You're going to use the side of the chalk and particularly a sharp corner, sharp edge, and just draw V's. Now, you know, 
it, it also looks like ocean waves and you actually use the same technique doing that. Okay, I'm going to erase a little bit more. Take some of that off. And just practice getting that shape right. Usually when, when somebody is beginning and learning how to draw a mountain like this, a lot of times they make the peak too tall or they draw a line. Okay, don't want to draw a line. We want to get a, a nice good shape here. So that's why, again, you're not going to use the tip of the chalk. You're going to use the edge of the chalk and get a lot more down in one shot. Okay, I'm going to take that off again. Okay, let's get rid of some of the excess here. I'm just going to rub it in. And let's do a few more mountains. Now, once you have done a bunch of these, it's going to start getting boring. So, you can begin to add a little bit of variety. Let's do a double mountain here. I'm going to do a little bit more of a peak. And then I'm going to add another shape right there. I'm going to come in and blend it down with my fingers. And I've got what could be a distant mountain. Now to make it even look a, bit, a little bit more like a distant mountain, a lot of times they will take either white or peach, and I'll come in and just hit the tip and the side of that mountain, just like that. And when you do that, you get a nice mountainy feel. All right, so that's that's one way to create a mountain. Now, the paper is getting dark enough. I can show you what I do when I'm using a lighter blue chalk. The best color to use for very distant mountains is going to be a very light blue. And again, I'm just going to use that kind of double upside down V. And lay in just a tiny bit of peach. Peach or white, you can use white too. And the question is, well, is this snow? Uh, not necessarily. It, it could just be the light, uh, sunlight hitting the uh, side of the mountain. So uh, we've got uh, a couple different mountains here. Now I want you to watch one more time. I'm going to do another mountain. I'm going to do it in a very dark blue chalk. Let's do it up here. This particular piece of chalk is kind of hard, so it's not wanting to draw easily. I'm going to do another double mountain there. And again, use my fingers to blend it down. And I'm going to use again a little bit of peach. I'm just going to come in and hit the side of it. Again, still working on the corner and the edges, not drawing, not drawing like a pencil where I'm using the tip of the chalk. I'm stroking and using the broad side of the chalk, or again, the, the corner, actually, the edge, as I try to get as much coverage as I can. Okay, so we've got three different colors for mountains. And one thing that as you begin to make pictures, you're going to want to learn how to do is to create the illusion of distance and perspective because the mountains that are in the lightest blue chalk are going to be the ones that are going to look the farthest away. This kind of medium value is going to look a little bit closer and the dark blue is going to be really close. So it just depends on what you're trying to draw. If you're just using mountains as kind of you know, the far background scenic mountains, uh, then you're going to go with a color like light blue. If you want something up close and a little bit more dramatic, then you're going to use 
you know, one of these two. Uh, either the turquoise here, uh, which is a, kind of a medium blue, or the dark blue. And we actually have a darker blue, but I'm not using that today. So, first step in drawing mountains is just getting a feel for the basic shape. And let me get a little of this dust out of the way. And practice, practice, practice. It can be boring, but as you get the hang of doing picture elements and doing mountains, then you're going to get a feel for creating a really nice dramatic effect uh, with again, beautiful scenic mountains. All right. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and do a quick picture that is going to incorporate the two picture elements that we have already learned. One, clouds, and then mountains. And uh, this will be a quick picture. You can practice a little bit, but uh, remember, uh, get, that, get that motion, that upside down V motion, so that your mountains uh, look realistic and uh, we'll have some fun with it. So uh, I'll be back in just a minute. All right, here's an art tip this week for working with chalk. Um, when I'm demonstrating these drawings, I'm using lecturer's chalk, which is uh, very large. Uh, it's uh, three inches long. This is actually a cut piece, but it's normally about three inches long uh, by uh, one inch square. And it's fine if you're drawing in big format like I tend to be, but if you're trying to draw something small, it can be a little cumbersome. And what I'd like to do is just briefly show you how you can cut it up into nice little triangles that uh, will be very easy to work with. And these are not much larger than uh, your average uh, pastel would be. So, uh, so they're good to work with. Uh, all you need is, is something to draw a, a line, a score, uh, on the chalk. If you've ever looked at a pill, uh, sometimes you'll see a pill has a, a little line uh, indentation uh, down the middle, and that's so you can break it into two smaller portions. Well, I have uh, you know no official tool. This is a leather working tool. This is for electronics. This is a bent paper clip. I can even use my own fingernail if I want to. But uh, to to do this, and I've already done a couple, just so I would show you have shapes to show you uh, going in. Uh, to do this, all I do is I measure about how thick I want it to be. And normally, it's it's you know I don't know what the exact measurements are on this, but that's about the width. If you, if you go too much narrower than this, then uh, it will tend to break up in your hand when you uh, break it into a smaller piece. So I'm just going to use my my tip, my sharp tip, and it's not particularly sharp. It wouldn't poke you if you put it on your finger. I mean, you can do that. It's, it's not terribly sharp. But I'm going to go all the way around and just cut a little score in the side of the chalk. No, now I didn't quite match up, but that's really okay. It's not that big a deal. I'm just going to make sure the scores match all the way around as much as possible. It won't be even, but that's all right. Okay, and once I have a score all the way around it, I'm just going to grab it. I'm going to hold the scored end, or hold one end, the end that I'm breaking off here, hold the other end here, and I've just snapped off a nice chunk. Now, that's still a little big. So I'd like to have it in a smaller piece, so I'm going to do the same thing again, but this time I'm going to go diagonally across the chalk. And you can score down the 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 edge if you want to. I found it's not really all that necessary. Now I've got some extra scoring here so it may break up on me just a little bit. We'll see what happens. Let's go down the edge. You don't really have to do that, but 
I did just to see what it would do. Okay, now I'm going to take one end in each hand, and again, I'm going to break it. It broke very nicely. And so now I've got you know four little chunks, and I've actually got a couple that uh, didn't work quite the way I wanted to earlier. But uh, again, what I found, again, it, especially if you're working in small format, these little chunks uh, are, are really nice because this can be, you know, it can be sometimes too big if you're trying to put any fine detail in. So uh, that's just a, a quick tip on uh, how to break chalk into smaller and more uh, useful pieces. Well, we better get back to that mountain drawing, so uh, let's get back to work. All right, we've zoomed in a little bit, and uh, let's just improvise and do some mountains. Uh, I'm not really going to be trying to draw a full picture, but I want to take our elements that we have you learned over the last couple of weeks. We learned clouds last week and uh, we're learning uh, mountains this week. So let's put those together and uh, just improvise a little landscape. That's one of the things I just love about working with chalk is uh, you, know, you can have some fun and if it doesn't turn out the way you like it then grab an eraser and try again. So uh, for starters I'm going to take a little white and let's throw some clouds in here just so that we have something so you can practice your clouds again remember actually I just erased this so let me smooth it with my hand a little bit get some of that excess chalk dust off all right let's just throw some clouds in just for fun just to give a little picture remember I'm using the side of the chalk and I'm just going in a circular motion remember we don't want to do a circle like that so that we have a, a little you know, sheep, don't want sheep, get rid of those. Okay, just, now the main thing with the clouds, remember you want to keep them from being too uniform. You know, you don't want it to look like that. You want some irregularity, so, you know, some I'm going to punch up, some I'm going to let be down, and we're just going to have a little bit of fun, again, using the side of the chalk and uh, the edges. Okay, let's get that out of there. Get my eraser, kind of remove that. Okay, and I'm just going to come in and I'm going to blend a little bit. And I'm not going to worry too much. I know I'm taking out a lot of those edges there, but we'll we'll come back to those in just a minute. I just want the the color basically to be kind of a nice white, and I will come in on top of that and add in just. Some highlights to make it look a little bit more cloudy. All right. Again, you can all of the effects that I'm doing, all the types of drawing that I'm doing here, you can do with soft pastels. I'm using lecturer's chalk, but you don't have to use that. Regular soft pastels will work really well. Okay, so we've just laid in some clouds uh, again, just just for fun. If you want to, you know, practice a little bit more, you can come down and do some more distant clouds. Remember, the closer they get to the horizon, the smaller they're going to be. So you, know, you can. But again, this is just sort of an improv. I don't have anything in particular in mind. I'm just drawing for the fun of it and seeing what you know what what works out. So I'm just throwing in some lines. And again, that's the beauty of being able to erase this. If you don't like what you've created, you look at it and say, "You don't like that too much." No, just boom, it's gone. Come back. I'm going to use the heel of my hand to kind of get rid of that line, blend it down a little bit better. And I have a very dirty hand, but that's okay. All right. I'm going to get that edge out just a little bit so it blends in a little bit better. All right. So, to throw in a mountain, let's throw in... For starters, a distant mountain. I'm going to use my lightest blue uh, to do that. And remember, I'm going to keep it in proportion. Remember, it's going to be off, off in the distance, so I don't want a great big. I'm going to put it kind of just a little bit off-centered. 
And remember the upside down V. Now this is going to be kind of hard to see because it, it almost perfectly matches the value of the background. Normally I would want this background to be a little bit lighter so that this stands out more. But uh, I've gone over this blue so many times that uh, it's not going to show up quite as well. But that's okay. Right now we're just kind of, again, play. Alright, so I've got my double upside down V. And I'm going to soften that off. And then I will come in with my peach. You can use, you can use white. This is a a light peach color uh, and again I'm gonna just hit the side just a little bit again this isn't snow it's more light hitting the side of the mountain okay so we've got that in it's not particularly bright I don't want it real bright if I make it too bright then it's gonna pull it to the uh, pull it to the front if I make it too bright if I put too much detail in it it's gonna bring it to the front I want it to stay in the back so just hitting it lightly I might come back in with just a little, little bit more there, but not too much. It's too much is going to bring it out a lot farther than I want. Okay, so we have our double mountains. Let's add in another row of kind of medium ground mountains. All right. Now, actually, before I do that, one thing that I do occasionally is I will take a little light green, sometimes even a little yellow. I've got some yellow here. Nice, a nice bright yellow. And I'm going to just really lightly come here. The yellow will kind of blend with the blue and, and make it a green. But I didn't press very hard. Just laid it in just a little bit. I'm going to come in with my fingers. I'm just going to blend that. And what that does is it kind of suggests uh, you know, foliage or, or you know, greenery as uh, you see off in the distance. Not again, not a lot of detail. In fact, no detail at all. Just I want a little bit of color there. Okay, let me take my medium blue. This is a turquoise uh, colored chalk, and I'm going to throw in a little bit more dramatic. Now again, we're we're still doing the upside down V, but. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Obviously, this is darker. I want to be real careful not to cover up my uh, mountains in the back. One thing that I had problems with when I was learning how to draw was uh, I would draw some really detailed, really cool-looking stuff, and then I'd come back in and I'd draw something else right on top of it. Well, you know, don't don't draw something if you're going to come back five minutes later and cover it up. Um, that's as a chalk artist, it took me a long time to, to, to learn that, but uh, I'm just going to come in, <coughs> excuse me, and doing my upside down V here, I'm going to bring that edge out, and I'm going to come over here and add a little bit more detail, maybe one more peak, and maybe one more over there, okay? Remember, using the side of the chalk, you know, I'm not, not drawing like a pencil, but I want to use the side to get a lot of color coverage. And now I'm going to come in again with my fingers. I'm going to blend. And I'm going to come down here and soften this out just a little bit. And see, I actually covered up all that green I put there. I just covered up. You really don't want to do that, but hey, it's a good illustration. Uh, don't, don't do what I just did. All right, here we go. Okay, and I'm going to soften the edges out again. Make it nice and smooth. And let's add a little bit of detail here. Again, coming in, side of the chalk, corner. I'm going to come down. I am going to make this a little brighter. And I'm going to just hit that lightly. We bring that down just a little bit here. Let's add a little bit more snow. Well, not, not really snow. It's Again, it's sunlight hitting the side. You know, we were out in California once, uh, quite a few years ago, and stayed in the mountains. And uh, there was this huge mountain right outside our cabin. And uh, 
I got up early one morning and it was just amazing to see how, how beautiful uh, the sun was as, or the mountain was as the sunlight uh, hit it. Uh, it was pink and it was just, it was just gorgeous. So that's kind of what, what kind of effect we've got going here. Uh, just some nice, nice highlights from the sun. I'm going to come in with a little darker green. Okay. And this particular, some of these sticks of green chalk tend to be very hard. And, uh, and it's not always easy to, to draw with them. Okay, again, I'm going to come in and use the, my fingertips and the heel of my hand to blend just a little bit. And I'm going to use a little darker green really here, and again, just throwing in some color at the moment. Now sometimes, you'll see, like this particular green isn't really wanting to, to cover well. Some of these sticks of chalk are, again, very soft, and others you have to come back in and, and work a little bit more. So here I've uh, kind of drawn a hill. You know what, I really don't like that hill. I'm going to come in here. Let's take that out. Again, the beauty of working with chalk. You're going to erase it. Now, of course, I don't get all the color out. i still got the green in here. But uh, I, can, I can correct a lot of my mistakes. Okay, I'm coming back in with sort of the middle value green that we have. And right now I'm just kind of laying in a little pasture. You know, it reminds me of, of the movie Sound of Music. You can just see Julie Andrews running across there uh, and, and twirling around and, and getting ready to, to sing that the hills are alive. Uh, uh, so let me come in here. With this kind of chalk, a lot of times you use the colors to, again, create the depth and to bring the foreground out. I'm using a very dark value green here, and that's going to help me bring that foreground to the front. Use my hand to blend it in a bit. Again, I'm just improvising right now. I'm really not planning a picture. I'm just having some having some fun. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, throw it on top of that green back in the back. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. And just finish it out. There's maybe some, how about some yellow orange flowers in here, just to just to give us a little bit of color and beauty in the foreground. I'm just I'm just using the end of the chalk and I'm kind of tapping in some flowers, rotating it a little bit. And if you want to, you know, even make it a little bit more detailed, you can come back in. And now I'm using the side of the chalk and, and putting more pressure on the you know on the front corner there so I am using it a little bit more like you might use a pencil. Just coming back in. This is yellow I'm laying on top of the green. It covers in nicely and then when it blends with the chalk it's gonna turn kind of a green itself. And there you have it, uh, just a, a real simple picture of mountains and a little pasture in the front, you know, just for fun. Let me throw maybe some pink flowers back in the background here just to give it a little bit more visual interest maybe. Again, just an improvised picture, but uh, a lot of fun to do. All right, I want you to play with your chalk, try to 
see if you can do that picture. And uh, next week we're going to come back and we're going to learn how to add trees uh, to our mix. So uh, I'm glad you joined us and I hope you'll find this helpful and that you'll really uh, get your hands dirty and have some fun with chalk. And I'll see you next time.